Well, today's daf is daf lamed gimel, and the Mishnah says vein chotchin also. If the shofar has to be cut down in order to blow it, we don't do that on Rosh Hashanah. And the Mishnah explicitly mentions bein v'davar shahu mishum shvus, bein v'davar shahu mishum losa sedoraisa. Whether or not in order to cut the shofar you violate a shvus derabanan. Or, and how much more so, it goes without saying, if you'll have to violate an Easter Molochad or Raisa for the sake of cutting down the shofar, we don't allow that on Rosh Hashanah. So the Gemara says the following, Mishum Shavuz, what would be an example of cutting the shofar but only violating a Shavuz? That's called Magala. Magala means that he uses a sickle, which is normally designated for Ketzira, for harvesting, crops out in the field. And that's not normally used to cut a shofar. So that's called tikkun kli kelachar yad. Kelachar yad means an unusual way. And therefore it's only a violation of an Easter derabana. What would be a case of cutting down the shofar and violating an Easter derabana? Losa se sakinam. If you take a knife, and generally speaking, when we cut a shofar, we use a knife. So this is the appropriate regular utensil that you would use to cut it down. In such a case, it's not kalachar yad, it's kedarko, and therefore he violates a malach and raisa of tikkun kli, which is a tolda of makam patish. So the Gemara says, hash to be shum shvus amret lo. You now tell me that you can't violate even a shvus derabonon by cutting the shofar with a sickle for the sake of the midst of shofar. Is lotas and mivoy? Did the Mishnah feel compelled to teach me that I don't cut down the shofar with a, with a knife which is its normal clear and violated of and it goes without saying. And once again, the Gemara, like it did in the previous sugya, invokes a literary methodology in the Mishnah of Zu V'ein Sarach Lomer Zu Ketani. You don't violate a Durabanon, and how much more so, it goes without saying, you don't violate a Dorais. That's the style of the Mishnah. The Mishnah says, Aval im ratzal liten litocho mayim oyayin yiten. It's not considered a violation of tikkun mana if you soak the shofar in order to improve the sound of the shofar and you soak it in wine or in water. That's not considered a tikkun because, as we said earlier, when we learned the sugya on Omen Aleph on the previous Omud, that the shofar can be blown even without soaking. You're only improving the shofar. That's not considered tikkun mana and that's what. Now the Gemara wants to know about another substance that apparently you could use to improve the sound of the shofar, which might come as a surprise to us. The Gemara says, in you're allowed to soak it in water or wine, but even though there's a certain acid in urine that would actually clean out the shofar and improve the sound of the shofar, but the mission is telling us that this we're not allowed to do. We'll explain why immediately. Masnis and Mani. Now the Mishnah reflects the opinion of Abba Sholhi. This side we learned in the Bryce, Abba Shol Omer, Mayim O Yayin Mutter. Kedele Tzachtzicho, in order to make the shofar inside spiffy, such that now it'll produce a very, very clear sound, beautiful sound. But Meirag Layim also would make kavod. This would be a bizarre to the mitzvah if you took the shofar and soaked it in urine, even though it would be effective. So that we don't do. Interesting, the Gemara seems to assume, and that's the premise on which this whole Gemara of Abishol is based, that shofar is what's called a heftzashol mitzvah. And I mention that to you because the Ramam seems to say otherwise, that the coal shofar, the sound produced by the shofar is the chef tzishon mitzvah. The shofar itself is only an instrument, a means to produce a chef tzishon mitzvah, but in and of itself, it's not a chef tzishon mitzvah. But the very fact that there's design a mitzvah about the shofar and soaking it, that would seem to indicate against the Rambam that the shofar itself is the chef tzishon mitzvah. We have another proof to the same conclusion from Chofra and Gazu. If you steal a shofar and you blow it, Ah, the Rambam says, actually, in that case, you would be yotze. According to what we're saying now, it's very possible you wouldn't be yotze because you need a chef to shofar with all its kashas. And once it's been stolen, it's called a misabob and the chef is disqualified.
The Mishnah says, "Hey, my Akvin is that Dinoko Spilus Koa Rosh Hashanah." And the implication is that amongst the various people in the groups of that make up Klal Yisrael that are part of the Mitzvah Shofar, will have a special license for one particular group, and that's the Ketanim. There's another group of Jews, probably makes up more than 50% of the population of the Jewish nation, and they are part of the Mitzvah Shofar, and those are the lady folk. From the fact that we have a special license to permit the blowing of the shofar within the context of chinuk for the children, it implies that other than that, there's no special matir or permission to blow the shofar on behalf of someone who's part of the mitzvah. If the women want to blow the shofar on Rosh Hashanah, we're going to tell them they're not allowed to blow the shofar. Here's shofar. Is a mitzvah asayshas man groma and noshim pturos, and therefore, if they will blow the shofar on Rosh Hashanah, now here the mafarshim got a tap. They say not only will they will be involved in violation of the isa derabona that we spoke about, that it's a maisa umnis, you know, that it's kind of a similar to a malacha, or perhaps there's a mukta issue. No, no, no. The mafarshim say there's an isa baltosin. And that's going to be a gigantic machlokas about baltosin in the case of a woman who wants to blow the chofar. The Rama, for example, will tell you that if a woman does a mitzvah and she is exempt from the mitzvah, she cannot make a brach on that. He has an exception, apparently, in the case of Talmud Torah which we're not exactly sure why, because the Ram doesn't advocate women for the study of Torah. He calls it Iflus. But in any event, the Ram does seem to allow women to study Torah. And the Shulchan Aruch is that women even make a bracha sa Torah, even though women don't make a bracha on any other mitzvah that they're exempt from. So the Gemara now is going to really analyze this question. Can a woman volunteer for a mitzvah when she's exempt from the mitzvah? Is it a problem of Baltosif? And the deal from that Mishnah seems to assume that yes, we have a Baltosif problem. And the Gemara raises the following objection about Tanya, we have a Brisa, Ema Akvim, Lois Hanishnoshim, Belois Atinokos, Miliskoa Biyantif. Obviously, there's no Easter Baltosif. The women blow the Shofar on Yantif on Rosh Hashanah, even though, despite that, they bought them because of Mitzvah Seishas Van Groma. And that's against the deal that we were Medaik and Mishnah. On Rabbi Lokash, Horab Yehuda, Horab Yosi, we have a major Mahlokas Tanoim about the issue of a woman who volunteers to fulfill a mitzvah that she's exempt from. Is there an issue of Baltos? Rabbi Yehuda is of the opinion that if someone is parted from a mitzvah and he goes and he does the mitzvah, he violates Baltos. Whereas Rabbi Yossi and Rabbi Shimon are of the opinion, no, you're part of the mitzvah, you're not obligated, but if you voluntarily opt to do the mitzvah, that's not baltosid. Besanya, where do we see this machlokas? So we have a brisa now that interprets a pasuk at the beginning of Sefer Vayikra with regard to the mitzvah of smicha b'karbonos. So we're not talking about rabbinic ordination. And in the puzzle, it says the words B'nai Yisrael, which implies Lashon Zoch. B'nai Yisrael Sonchim, the Ein B'nos Yisrael Sonchus. And that means, dear Rabbi Yehuda, that according to Rabbi Yehuda, a woman is not only exempt from smicha b'karbanos, but if she goes ahead and does smicha on her own voluntary basis, she violates the Easter of Baltos. But Rabbi Yossi and Rabbi Shimon Omrim, Nashim Somchos Rishus, although I grant you, B'nai Yisrael below, B'nos Yisrael in smicha, but nevertheless, it's a rishos. It's not an isur. They're exempt from the mitzvah. It's not a violation of Baltosif if they take it upon themselves voluntarily to fulfill the mitzvah of smicha b'karbanos. 
So that according to Rabbi Yossi and Rabbi Shimon, in the case of Shofar, clearly there would be no violation of Baltosif, just like in the case of Smicha Bakarbanos, even though they're Pturos, nevertheless, there's no Baltosif. Whereas, according to Rabbi Yossi, Rabbi Yehuda, when a woman takes it upon herself to fulfill a mitzvah that she's exempt from, that's going to be a problem of Baltos. So this is the way the Gemara reconciles a contradiction between our Mishnah and the Brisa. The Brisa clearly allows women to blow the shofar without any problem. As we say in Hebrew, Belia is good. But in the case of our Mishnah, we would like that women would not be allowed to blow the shofar in Rosh Hashanah. And the answer is that our mission reflects the sheet of Rabbi Yehuda, who in the case of Smicha Bukhamanos, Paskins that aim Venosis or something. They don't have any legality, any permission to blow, to do Smicha, and likewise to do shofar blowing. Whereas the Brisa that allows women to blow the shofar is to be attributed to Rabbi Shimon and Rabbi Yossi, who are of the opinion that women can do Smicha and Karbanos on a voluntary basis. And there's no violation of Baltos. The Mishnah continues. We try to teach the children how to blow the shofar. And even though, again, as we said before, Tkiyah Shofar Rosh Hashanah is itself in a violation of an Isra Drabon, and if you're not Chayim in the Mitzvah, but they were martyred for the sake of Chinoth, the Mitzvah Shofar. Amar Abulazar. What if there's an overlap of Shabbos and Rosh Hashanah? Afilu b'Shabbos. What that means is that we're allowed to have the, the children, the young children, blow shofar on Rosh Hashanah, even in a case, says Rabbi Lazar, where Shabbos is Rosh Hashanah, Rosh Hashanah is on Shabbos. And again, once... Once we have this takano of the Xerid Rabbana that you don't blow shofar on Rosh Hashanah, here we have an additional problem. It, it's Shabbos. And, you know, you're violating a now a chus of uh, Xerid Rabbana on the Isa Shabbos, but Rabbi Luz says no. We're allowed for the sake of, of Chinuch to blow, have the children blow shofar even on Shabbos of Rosh Hashanah. And the Mepharshim say that any other Shabbos during the course of the year, let's say there were 52 weeks in the year, 51 out of 52, you would not allow the blowing of the shofar for the sake of chinuch. But if it's Rosh Hashanah, which is called mitzvah hayom, that we will be matir chinuch in the case of a child for an Eastern Rebbein. Now, what is the problem with blowing shofar on Shabbos of Rosh Hashanah in general? And the answer is, Gzeirah Shem Yavir Sashofar, Dalit Amas B'Sharabim, Kidei Lalalet Laleches Labaki, who will teach him the laws of Tkir. He'll violate the Malach of Hotzah by carrying the shofar for Amos till he gets to the Baki. He's going to teach him how to blow the shofar. So basically, Rosh Hashanah Shechalios B'Shavis, the Isa Tkia, comes under two categories. Number one, the Isa Tkia is Asura Mitzad Atzma. In and of itself, it's a violation of an Isa Drabonon. And the reason for that Isa Drabonon in blowing Shofar on Shabbos or Yantif is because Rashmas Kol or because Tzachachma, the Umnus, as we said earlier. And in addition to that, we have a Xerab Shama Yavras Ashofar Dalaramas Krishna Sarab. But nevertheless, despite these factors, for the sake of Khina, we're going to allow the blowing of the shofar on Shabbos of Rosh Hashanah. Tanya Nami Hochi, we learned that thus in a Brisa. Miss Askin Bahem will involve ourselves overseeing the children, Ad Shiyilmadu, until they learn how to blow shofar. Afilu. Even if Rosh Hashanah is Chal B'Shabbos, and there's an overlap now of two Isur, of Chemeya Virenu, plus the Maisa of Hashmas Pol, which is a Maisa of Umnis, which is also Mirabon.
And all this will be matir, even on Shabbos and Rosh Hashanah, for the sake of the greater good of Chinu. The aim of Akhvist, the Tinokos, Miluskov, Shabbos, the Enktar Klomar, the Yon. So, with regard to the Tinokos, we will not object to the Tinokos blowing Shofar on Rosh Hashanah, Shechaliyos, for Shabbos. And it goes without saying that if it's uh, Yom Chol, if it's Yom Tov Rosh Hashanah on, on a weekday, for sure we're going to allow the children to blow the shofar on Rosh Hashanah. <laughs> the Gemara asks the question of Gufa Kasha. This price seems to be co- contradicting itself. Amrit, it says, Miss Aski by Manchil, Meduva Filu Bishabbos. We're going to teach the children how to blow shofar, even if our son is on Chavez. Alma, Lechat Chilam Rinon, Tiku. The language is very clear here in the Brisa when it says Miss Askivana. It means that even Lechat Chilam, you're allowed to teach the children how to blow shofar, and even on Shabbos. But yet in the price itself, it says, Ein ma'akvim. we're not going to f- prevent you and inhibit you from blowing the shofar on behalf of the children, uh, you know, teaching the children how to blow the shofar, which means that he kuvahu lo ma'akvim, but l'chadchila lo l'aminitik. So the impression you get from the Bryce is certainly that L'Chadchilu we're not going to advocate that you blow the shofar with the children. And the Gemara says, lo kasher. And here we turn to Daf, Lam, and Gimel, and Beis. And in the Bryce of B'Kot, and She'il, and Gil Chinuch. And therefore, we have to be Mechanechim. And it's Muto L'Chadchilu to Misasek Himo and to tell the children to blow the shofar for the sake of Pina Pakan. At the end of the price, it says that with Ein Ma'akrim so, we're not going to f- prevent you from doing so, but L'Chathili should avoid it. That's because Shalom Yigiyah L'Chinuf. He has not reached the age of Chinuf.